morning. It is day 20 of Vlogmas. I can't believe it's the 20th. I am so excited that Christmas is getting so close now. I'm also super excited because I just officially finished my work. I wasn't sure if I would get it all done by today, but I managed to package up all of the remaining leather tote bags that were on pre-order, so I finished them. Um, they are all stacked up and I'm just about to load them into my car and drop them off to ship. So that is a huge relief. Now I'm just really looking forward to the weekend and I'm officially done work at the same time the kids are done school. So that's always nice. I wasn't sure if I would be doing a bit of that this weekend. So I hit my goal. I'm going to pack everything up into the car, drop them off, and I'm not even sure what I'm going to do today now. I have cleaning and baking, so I'm going to start making lists, and I might just take some time this afternoon and relax, catch up on my Cozy Knitter Advent socks because I haven't knit on them in a couple of days now. Um, I just got too busy and I saw the light at the end of the tunnel with the tote bags and decided to just push them out this week, so I'm really glad they're done. I am just going to get ready to go, and actually I'm going to share one other thing with you. I received the most beautiful gift this week from my friend Annie, who is Annie Perrin in Montreal. She dyes yarn. She formally dyed it under the Knitting It Up label. And I had ordered some of her gorgeous mohair because I wanted to make um, a Birds of a Feather shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I had seen a gray and a mustardy or golden color of mohair that she dyed, and I thought, that would be a beautiful birds of a feather. So she sent it to me along with a whole bunch of other goodies that I wanted to share. First, there were these chocolates. And of course, I've eaten a few already because they're delicious. A candy cane and a lush shower gel, which looks so beautiful. And oh my goodness, look at this. Annie. You are so amazing. So these were the colors that I had spotted and I really, really knew I had to make a shawl with. I didn't know which mohair, but I really wanted to do a Grello kind of colored shawl. So Annie <laughs> sent her beautiful, I don't know what the name of it is. Some of these are not labeled, um, but it's kind of her Grello colorway. So it's a mixture of these golden mustard colors with gray. Oh my gosh cannot wait to make that. And then she also included these beautiful skeins of Mad Max on her Monklin base, which is totally my colors. Look at them. They're so beautiful. Oh my gosh, Annie, I love everything. And these were the mohairs. They're also absolutely stunning. Thank you so much, Annie. What a sweet surprise right before Christmas. I am back from shipping all the bags. I've eaten some lunch and I'm just starting to think about my Christmas baking, which I probably won't get to until Sunday, maybe a little bit on Monday, but I wanted to make my grocery list and make sure that I had everything I needed. And these two recipes here are ones that I make every single year. If you have watched my vlogs in the past, you've seen them, it's probably boring, but these are the must-haves. They're in my house every Christmas. So the first one is the chewy chocolate gingerbread cookies. This one is a favorite of Glenn and James. They are a Martha Stewart recipe. It's actually on the cover of her cookies book and you can find this one online. And another one that I make every year, it's kind of a tradition. I call them and lots of people have started calling them Sandy's shortbread meltaways because I've given this recipe to so many people. I found them in this book in 2006. It was in the grocery store and it was put out by Robin Hood Flour. This is them here and I loved them so much that I used to have a blog. I've had a couple of blogs like family and food blogs in the past and I posted about it years ago and I've shared it with so many of my foodie friends it's just an absolute amazing recipe. I don't know how to explain it. They are just these little shortbread cookies. They melt in your mouth, but they have score toffee bits. There's the recipe. 
um, you can probably take a screenshot, copy it, or you might even be able to Google it and find it. They're called shortbread meltaways. I would highly recommend this recipe. It is like, I know it's by Robin Hood, but I make them so much I feel like they're mine. So those two are definites. I was thinking of what else I wanted to make this year. I don't think I'm going to make the traditional sugar cookies that I sometimes do, um, or Empire Biscuits. Those are both from my mom and my mother-in-law. I know I'm going to make the honeycomb probably on Sunday because I'm going to put that in a tin for Glenn as a gift. And another favorite that I haven't had in a while are just traditional magic cookie bars. So like I go looking for these booklets every year now in the grocery store and as, as soon as I find them, I grab them. And this recipe is an old one. My mom makes these, but I think that might be fun to have some bars. And I'm considering making the, I think it was peppermint fudge that Denise had posted. Denise from Earth Tones Girl. I have to snatch that recipe. She posted it somewhere on a vlog or on her Instagram, I'm not sure. But it looked delicious and I thought that would be really fun. I'm also considering marshmallows. Now that I have that candy thermometer, I'm thinking of all the things I can make with it. So that is pretty much my baking list. I know the three for sure. The honeycomb, the chocolate cookies, and the shortbread meltaways. I am gonna have to put some of those ingredients on my list because I don't have them. And I will get a few extra ingredients just in case over the holidays I might wanna make a few extra things. I am just gonna run out to our mailbox and check the mail because I just saw our mailman deliver some packages and we are just getting so much today and yesterday all the last minute things that we ordered for christmas gifts they are all arriving which is great and i'm not really a fan of wrapping presents so i'm gonna set up a big pile and hopefully glenn will work on those this weekend he's a pretty good wrapper so i'm just gonna run outside do that and then i'm gonna come inside get warm and make myself a nice cup of coffee and sit down and knit. I have had a really nice afternoon. I just sat and knit and watched some vlogs and it was so nice. And I finished one of the heels and decreases on one of the advent socks. So I'm really excited that I can move on to the second heel. But now it's time to think about dinner. And I didn't really plan too much, but I did have something in mind. So I haven't been too stressed about it because I remembered this recipe that I was looking at earlier in the week and it is from the Half-Baked Harvest Super Simple Book. But I know that I've made a carnitas recipe in my Instant Pot before with a pineapple salsa, and it was so delicious, but I can't find the recipe anywhere, which is weird because I keep a binder, and if I end up loving a recipe, I usually keep it in here. This is kind of like my little um, book of things that I know that we really really love. So I've got my instant pot section here. It is not anywhere in here. Oh, but side note I don't know why this is in here because it's not an instant pot recipe, but I make this recipe every Christmas Eve and we eat it for Christmas morning breakfast It is delicious it is the Baked Cream Cheese French Toast Casserole. The website you can find it on is Sally's Baking Addiction. It is incredible. You get um, like a nice crusty or French loaf of bread. 
and you basically make French toast in a casserole, but you also dollop in this amazing cream cheese mixture. It is like heaven. It is such a treat. It is our Christmas morning breakfast, and it's really nice because you can prepare it the night before. And then just before we open presents, I pop it in the oven, and by the time we're done, everything is ready, and it is so good. So back to my dinner. I think I'm gonna try this recipe and hope that it's good. It's pretty simple. And if I feel like it, I can make the pineapple salsa. I don't know, I don't really feel like cutting up a pineapple right now, but I think this is all I'm making for dinner. I'm not really gonna do much else. The boys will love it. So maybe I need the salsa.